I recently introduced three chord shapes that I think are super fundamental and act as guideposts for you to find your way across the entire neck. I'll link that video in the description where I go into the basics of that, but today I'm gonna to expand on that idea and show one of the ways that these shapes are extremely useful. One of the most important things about finding your way through a chord progression is knowing where all the different chord shapes are in relation to one another. So I'm gonna show the big three shapes. This time I'm gonna do them in the context of a simple one, four, five chord progression. I'm gonna do this for major and minor, including a little variation on the minor. So I'm going to start by just going over the big three, but I'm gonna do it in a single position. So I'm gonna do it as a one, four, five, and I'm gonna do it in the key of C. That's my root position, big three shape. So now in the key of C, the four chord is F. And so to make an F chord from this position here, I'm gonna go into the second inversion big three shape from the same starting note, C, because that's the five of the F chord. So I'm gonna go up. So that's my four chord shape. To go to my five chord shape, I need to go to the other of the big three. So see how with a one, four, five, I'm using one of each of these big three shapes, but I'm staying in basically one position in order to do it. So the five chord is G, and I'm gonna play the first inversion starting on B here on the sixth string at the seventh fret. So I'm gonna go up. Then I could go back to my one. So to play all of them one after the other, starting with C. To F. To G. Back to C. So those are the basic arpeggio patterns. What you can do with this information is in any of these positions that you can make, let's say I take this chord, which is the C chord on the first three strings, strings one, two, three, and I wanna to go to an F chord in this position. Well, I'm gonna take the same three strings from that full big three F shape. Now I've got a C to an F, if I want to play the G, the five chord, I'd take it from this one, strings one through three, and then I go back to C. So I could play a one, four, five with these triad voicings that I derived from those big three shapes. And you can do that on any string set. I could do that here, here, and here. So I'm gonna go up to the first inversion C chord and show you the next position of the same progression, one, four, five in C major. So I'm gonna be at my first inversion C major, big three shape. And right here, I'm a half step away from F. So my four chord F is gonna be the root position, big three shape. And then G is gonna be here on the fifth string, 10th fret. So I'm gonna start on the D to make it second inversion, big three shape. And I can go back to my C, first inversion. And I can do the same thing that I did before, pulling out the three note triad shapes to make this progression in the different positions of this shape. I hope you can see how those nicely fit together and create comfortable patterns that you can use in songs. Um, typically, you're gonna stay 
towards the higher strings, um, at least probably strings four through one, because things start to get a little muddy as you get lower, but um, so that doesn't always matter. Sometimes you'll use those lower voicings as well. The next shape and final shape is gonna be second inversion. Second inversion C major. To first inversion F major, big three. To root position G major. Then back to C major. I can do the same thing with the chords here, pulling the three string pieces out of each of those big three shapes. So there you have it. Those are the big three shapes one four five patterns in c major and just like any of these you can apply them to any key just by moving the root note to your desired location i'm going to go over the minor chords now and i'm going to do this also starting from c so i'm going to go c minor f minor g minor and then g major because so many times in a minor key you'll have the major five chord not every time but it's very common so i'm going to do that progression uh, minor one minor four minor five then major five so Starting from C, I'll have my root position, minor, big three shape. Which is the exact same as my major shape, just with the third lowered on the fifth string and on the second string by a half step. Then I'm gonna go into my second inversion F minor shape. to my first inversion G minor shape. To a G major shape, just by raising the th thirds in the pattern by a half step. And then I could go back to C. And I can make my three string chord shapes. C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, and then C minor, F minor, G minor, G major. Now I'll move up to the first inversion C, C minor shape. Uh, this is the C minor big three in first inversion. So starting from E flat. Then I have root position F minor. Then I have second inversion G minor. second inversion G major. And then C minor in first inversion. And then my triads, I have C minor here, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor. And finally, we're going to do second inversion C minor. This is the big three C minor shape and second inversion starting from G. Then we have 
have first inversion F minor, big three shape, starting from A flat. A root position G minor. Then root position G major. Then back up to C minor. Then I can play the 1, 4, and 5, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, G major, C minor, F minor, G minor, so you can use these chords for improvisation. You can obviously use the arpeggio patterns. Um, you don't want to take necessarily all six strings all the time, take pieces of it, incorporate it into your playing. But here's an example of one way you could embellish a chord pattern like that minor chord pattern. Uh, the first one that I did. So if I know the chords, uh, the scale tones that surround this chord, I can easily embellish this chord and create melodies. Go up to F minor, same thing. G minor. G major. C minor. So those notes that surround the chords are extremely useful. You can use them so much for chord parts. You can use them for improvisation and soloing. Um, you can create cool riffs and, and everything. So just I highly encourage you to explore the notes around all of these different chord voicings. Try to find the, the right scale notes. Sometimes when you're playing a chord change like Let's say you're playing the five chord in a minor key. It's not going to sound right just to play a G minor scale. What I'm doing is playing a progression all in C minor. So I want to stay in the C minor scale, even though I'm playing this chord. And then when I go to that G major, um, if you want to outline the chord, you probably want to play the major third and then have the rest of the scale still be C minor, which would make like a C harmonic minor. But that might be a little more advanced, but just try to get these patterns of the one, fours, and fives and the major and minor keys down. And I think you'll be in good shape and be seeing the patterns of the guitar much more easily. I'm gonna finish with just an example of a uh, song progression that I can use these shapes for. So I'll do a one, four, two, six in the key of C and show just kind of some ways I'm using these big three shapes, interchanging them and also embellishing each of the chords. So C, so my one, four, two, six would be C, F, then D minor to the sixth chord, which would be A minor or this one. So I'm going to just play through that in a four, four time, just to give you an idea of how I might improvise over this kind of progression. So one, two, three, four. So that's just one time around, but I can create a lot of different interesting parts using those different chord shapes and the notes that surround them in the scale. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll have another lesson coming soon and some shorts that will go into some practice ideas based on this coming out this week.